want to do is you want to keep your audio separate to your mains so you never want them crossing over because that's how you get more noise more I'm Colleen Cosmo Murphy and I'm a music and sound obsessive I moved to the UK in 1999 and in 2003 myself and a few other friends and our friend David Mancuso started a party here in London called the Lucky Cloud Loft Party after a couple of years of renting sound systems and not being very happy with the result, one day we decided to buy our own sound system. That's when I really got the hi-fi bug and became an audiophile. What I had realized is with the advent of the CD in the 1980s, sound quality just started going down until we ended up with the MP3 in the late 1990s. So it was actually sitting around listening to records on our own living room with friends that really gave me the idea to start Classic Album Sundays. Classic Album Sundays is now a worldwide listening event in which we listen to music on vinyl on amazing hi-fi audiophile equipment. I wanted to find out what other sound systems were doing, especially ones that have great heritage here in the UK. Why is it important to them? How much work does it take? I also want to find out which equipment they're using. So I'm going to meet one of the UK's most legendary sound systems. They've been going since 1979. They're a staple at Notting Hill Carnival. They won the 2010 Red Bull Culture Clash, they've performed at Wembley Arena, and they've taken their sound system all over the world. I'm going to meet the legendary Channel One. Rastafari, rebel soul, rebel heart, rebel mind, yeah? When you hear reggae music and you feel hungry, you see when it finished, you're full up, yeah? Yes, yeah. Thank you so much for joining me. This is really exciting to learn about sound system culture because your angle is a bit different from mine, but I think there's also a lot of similarities mm. too. So I'm really looking forward to finding out about more. First, I just want to rewind a little bit and go back to Jamaica. In Jamaica in the 1940s and 1950s, that's where sound system culture really started. Now, your father, Mikey, came over in the Windrush generation. Yeah, around that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he, along with many others of the Windrush generation, brought sound system culture here to the UK. Yeah. Now, what was your father's sound system like back then? Do you remember? Basically, two boxes. Um, one big one, one small one. That's what I remember. In the mid-morning, five, six o'clock, you used to hear him coming up the stairs with boxes and whatever. <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's, it was normal. And it must have really piqued your interest because uh, obviously you involved through the rest of your life with it. So yeah, what was yeah, so appealing yeah, about yeah, it Yeah, the appealing is, um, you know, you're playing music to all these people, mm. you know, and they're dancing to your music, to your sound system. And that's what's really set me on a musical trend. Tell me a little bit about the transition between your father having the sound system and then you taking it over in 1979. How did that come about? Yeah, it was uh, um, at them time, my father, he kind of left it. Me and Jati saw that things could be progressing a little bit more. There's another guy in, in the area, he used to call a sound system called King Edwards, and he had a massive big amplifier. He, he just said to him, listen, you want to buy the amplifier? And we went home and spoke to mom about it. She said, just do it. And I had some savings. Jati had some savings, 
So he said, you know what, let's just buy the amplifier, man. You literally have power overnight. He gave us his boxes, which is like big seven foot things. Basically, literally from a little small sound system one night to a big powerhouse the night after. And how important was it to you to keep this legacy alive? It's, it's very important because it's our thing. Mm. It's, it's not corporate stuff, it's just what we do. And the thing is, it's like a trade. You build these boxes with your hands. When you put this sound system together in this venue, and you actually hear what you've achieved, you plant the seed from 40 years ago till now. I'm in love with these cables. Said, that's, that is it. That is it. So, um, that, that's how sad we are. I'll tell you. <laughs> that we, that I'll we, tell you. we get excited yeah, about this. Like, I noticed I'll it right away. I'm like, what a good idea. I've never yeah, thought that. Yeah, I'll tell you. No, it, just make, it just makes sense at the end of the day. So you know exactly which one. So anything goes down, and then yeah. I know exactly which one it is. Which is just a check for. How important is the actual look? When you build something with your hand, it's not 100% perfect. Yeah, and that is like life. Life is not 100% perfect. Yeah, we reflect where we come from. We're not from people who was born with a gold spoon in our mouth. We didn't even have a wooden spoon, right? But everything <laughs> we, we have, yeah, it looks like, if you know what I mean, it belongs in sound system, what a sound system usually looked like back in the day. Well, I think more importantly than how it looks, too, is how it sounds. That's right. Yeah, yeah. of course. What are you trying to get out of a system? How important, say, is the bass to you? Or, or what are you trying to get out of it? It's not today with, well, with Channel One, it's not today about being a big powerhouse, super sound. That's not what I need. Channel One is about music. As I say, with Channel One, you try and give people an earth feeling, you know, because at the end of the day, we say we play roots and culture. Roots and culture meaning it starts from the ground. And so, you know, a lot of bass line from sounds nowadays hits you, bang. But you see, with Channel One, the bass comes from down there and it comes up and it flows from your feet to your mind. When they come to a Channel One session, it's like an occasion, it's an even. It's not just because you just come and listen to the sound system to just blow your head off on whatever, you know, 40 years and then you have to go some point that's trying to be the heavyweight sound system at some point. You see, we don't need to be proving any, anything to anybody. Now you only use one turntable, which I find fascinating, and you're not using headphones either. Why, why do you do it that way? One, you can only listen to rap music at one time. Two, I do my homework. And you know, you study your music and things at, at, at home, you know roughly what you're gonna play. People only listen to one music at one time. Why do you prefer analog over digital? Digital sound, as a lot of people know, go straight to your ears. And it's just like, it's like it's a signal. Mono, analog, gives you that warm feeling. We stick to that analog sound and analog feeling. So everything we do is in mono, not stereo. When you look at a digital sound, it travels straight. Where analog goes like this, right? And that's how your body is. Your body takes in things that flows. Reggae music starts from down there. It speaks to your body before your mind. So this means, that's that a porthole port where all the air comes from. If it's done right, it gives you the roundness of the base. And sometimes you could be just like two inches out. Right. And if it's not done right, the bass will wobble. Yeah, it starts you wobbling want a tight or whatever. Bass. Yeah, you want it tight, tight yeah. and nice and round. Could you just walk us through your sound system, the various components? Well, you know, you have a lot of people who play four way, but we play five way bass, high bass, mids, high mids, and tops. What I find with that, that one extra channel gives that little bit of a voice in, and it comes out much more clearer than having mids and just tops alone. 
Everything there is for a reason, for every instrument to be heard. But we keep it simple. Everything is in that preamp. You will go to sound systems and you say this, 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 enter this, into a comp uh, compressor, into this compound, into this graphic equalizer, into this. The crowd don't give a toot. They just want to hear good quality music. Now, how do you feel sound system culture is, is a lifestyle? Because it's not just kind of what you do. You don't just like punch in, punch out, and it's really your life. It's your liberty. I think it's basically, you 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 wake up in the morning thinking, you know, sound system. You go to bed thinking sound system. You know, so it's something where you have to really make sure you sleep when you can, you eat when you can, <laughs> <laughs> eat well, <laughs> eat well, healthy. when you can, yeah. or whatever, and basically, you know, get some get some good rest because it's it's tough. I mean, but why do we do this? It's a love. It's a love. It's a passion. From you have that passion, that love and for the music, for people, right? It's just like being in love with somebody. You would move heaven and earth to be with that person. For me as well, I think it's the people at the party and their spirit being uplifted and that kind of communal feeling. Why do you think it's important to keep this going and how long do you think you will continue? Well, I think it's, it's important because these younger sound systems coming up now, they want to go to the top spot. So as long as Channel One sound system is around, they're going to find it out. So the legacy is from Channel One <coughs> is keep Roots music alive. I think because it's very important, reggae music is being played. When our thing is gone, we want to still know that sound system from Colombia to Australia is still there. So that's what we do. That's the fire. Without no distraction Tell me where did they go I only see Joker rebels Dressing up in a Rasta cloth